Alright, I'm going to draw a default coordinate system where the positive x is pointing off to the right, the positive y direction is upwards, and I'm just going to draw a vector on here. All right, and I'll just choose to have it start at the origin and maybe point in this direction. And I can just call it A. Right, so if we leave it as a vector, which is pointing in the x direction, because it's pointing leftwards a bit, and in the y direction, pointing upwards, it can get pretty complicated. So what we're going to do is actually break it into two different pieces. Just the x information, and then separately just the y information. And what we can do is use this angle here to break it into a right triangle where these legs of the right triangle are parallel with the coordinate system. And here. So this we could call vector a x. It's just along the x direction. It's just the x information for the vector. And then this would be a y. And so if you look at that, you can see that adding a x to a y tip to tail would give us a. It would have also been fine if you had been looking at this angle, let's just call that angle phi for now, and then decided to make your right triangle this way. And again, these pieces of this right triangle that we're drawing have to be parallel to the coordinate system. So this one is parallel to the x, this one is parallel to the y. And then to get from the beginning, to the end of our A arrow, we could have had this be called A Y, and then this be called A X. So we end up with A Y plus A X is equal to A. And these are the exact same thing because it doesn't matter which order you add in. And notice that these two A Y's are the exact same vector because they have the same direction and the same length. We don't care where it starts at. Same for the AX's. So these here would actually be called component vectors. We took a two-dimensional arrow that pointed in the X and the Y directions and broke it into a one-dimensional arrow and a one-dimensional arrow. Now we don't use component vectors a whole lot, we're going to take it even one step further, and instead of um, describing this as a vector, let's describe it as a positive or negative number. So in this case, this arrow AX is pointing in the negative X direction, so let's just describe it as a negative value. All right, so when we do that, we're going to call it components, describing the component vectors as positive or negative values. Let me re-sketch what I had earlier. So we had vector A and let's say vector A pointed from the origin to this point might have been negative 3 meters on the x-axis and 2 meters on the y-axis. So then I could choose this triangle to study AX, the component vector, I could say was 3 meters to the left, but if I just wanted to use the component, which is we're going to say is not a vector, it's just a value, so I'm not going to draw the little arrow over it, I would just say is negative 3 meters, where the negative means left. AY, the component vector, which is just going to describe the y information of A here, 
we could say would be two meters up. But let's take it one step further and just describe it as a component. We'll say positive two meters, where the positive implies upwards. So in this example, I have a vector and I know its components. Let's use that information to solve for the magnitude of A, its length, and how about also this angle? We'll call it theta. So we can use the Pythagorean to solve for the magnitude of A. Right, so we're going to look at this triangle and say that A squared, the length of A squared, would be equal to the length of AX squared plus the length of AY squared. But then we can take the square root of both sides and end up with a is equal to plus or minus the square root of ax squared plus ay squared. The plus or minus just happens whenever you take the square root. But in this case, we're just going to want the positive. A negative length would not make sense here. We don't want that. So then this would be the square root of negative 3 meters squared plus 2 meters squared, which would be equal to the square root of 13 meters squared. The meter squared is because the units get squared as well. And then this would be 3.61 meters. We take the square root of the value and we take the square root of the units. And if I was only going to do one sig fig, not very precise at all, I could just round this to four, I suppose. Now to find the angle, now since I know the side of this triangle and the side of this triangle, I could use tangent. Do tangent of theta, which is equal to opposite side over adjacent side. And since in physics, um, we, we can describe lengths of triangles as negative, and that can mess up our inverse tangent function, I'm gonna put some absolute value bars around here. I'm just going to plug them in as positive, and that'll just give me the amount of that angle that I drew. So since I need to solve for theta, I'll take the inverse tangent of both sides. The opposite was 2 meters, and the adjacent was 3 meters, and again I just plugged it in as positive. And so I get 33.69 degrees. So now that we used the Pythagorean to find the length of it and the tangent to find the angle, we can just give vector A now as a magnitude and a direction. Four meters, well, let's run this to 30 degrees, above the negative x axis. What if we started off with something like this and needed to break it into components? So we could have positive x, positive y, and how about this down here? And we might know that it was, all right, let's call it vector a, where a is equal to 10 meters 50 degrees below the positive x-axis. Let's find the components. Let's find out how many meters it was stretching this way and how many meters it was stretching this way. And this is going to be the right angle to our triangle. So here is the theta because that's the 50 degrees below the positive x-axis. The hypotenuse here at a length of 10 meters. And from geometry, you probably remember that sine of the angle is equal to the opposite over the hypotenuse. But in physics, I usually like to rewrite that as the opposite is equal to the hypotenuse times sine theta. You don't have to do it that way, but I find it saves time. Right? You don't have to do it that way, but I just think it saves time. But in physics also, the length of that can represent a positive or negative value. In this case, it's going to represent a negative component because of it kind of pointing downwards. So I'm also going to write in a plus or minus here for you to choose it yourself. 
Also from geometry we had cosine of the angle would be equal to the adjacent or the hypotenuse. But I'm going to rewrite it as the adjacent is equal to the hypotenuse times the cosine of the angle. But I'm also going to write in an extra plus or minus here for you to take a second and decide is it representing a positive component? So let's find AX. AX, the component, is adjacent to our angle. So I'm going to use this one. Is equal to plus or minus the hypotenuse, which was 10 meters, times the cosine of that angle, which was 50 degrees. And in this case, AX, in this case the vector was pointing rightward instead of pointing leftward, so I'm going to choose positive. So positive 6.43 meters. If I was just doing one sig fig, I would just round that to 6 meters. A y, the y component, how far did the arrow stretch downward, is here. So we'll do plus or minus the hypotenuse length, 10 meters, times the sine of the angle. And in this case, the arrow was stretching downwards rather than upwards, so I'm going to choose negative to represent that. So negative 7.66 meters, which could round to just 8 meters, since I really just kind of started off with one sig fig. So let's do adding vectors again. Before we were looking at it as taking different arrows, I think we had called it something like push one, and adding them tip to tail like this. And then we would use that to find our answer arrow. Right there. But there's a way that we can do it faster and more accurately if we already know the components of all of those arrows. So how about we say that P1X could have been 3 meters to the right and P1Y would have been just 0 meters. It wasn't stretching up or down. It was only a horizontal arrow. P2X, let's just say, was 0 meters. It wasn't trying to stretch to the right or to the left. It was just stretching up. And P2, Y, the Y component of arrow 2, was just going upwards, let's say, 2 meters. P3 in the X, it was going left, and let's say that it went left 1 meter. And P3, Y. Let's say that P3 wasn't just horizontal. And it was also downward a bit. So maybe it went down 0.3 meters. So we have all of the x components for the individual ones, and we want to find the total, the sum. So let's find the total x component. So how about we call it px, but it's not for one or two or three, it's for the net, the total. So the total here is 2. So this red arrow stretched right 2 meters. And for the y components, what it was the total there, 2 up minus 0.3, so 1.7 meters. So this red arrow went upwards 1.7 meters. How about we then take that information from adding the components and then find its overall length and its angle here. So P net using the Pythagorean on this red triangle would be equal to the square root of this side squared plus this side squared. So 2 meters squared plus 1.7 meters squared. 
equal to 2.62 meters. And the angle is the inverse tangent of the opposite side, 1.7, over the adjacent side. Meters will cancel out, and that will give us this angle of 40.36 degrees. So I could say that the total then, because I was adding arrows and adding components together, could be 3 meters 40 degrees above the positive x axis. And here I implied that the positive x direction was just default and the positive y direction was default. So what we just did was basically saying let's take P1 plus P2 plus P3 all of those were vectors to find P net. And this is a, these can all be two-dimensional arrows which can be kind of complicated. So what we did was we took that idea and we broke it into two simpler ideas. Adding the x components to find the total x component. And then adding the y components to find the overall net total y component. And this idea could be made a lot more general if we had done something like vector a minus 2 vector b would be equal to vector c, right? We could just break that apart and just do it in components where ax minus 2bx is equal to cx, right? We just did it once, only in the x, and now let's do it again, but only in the y. ay minus 2by is equal to cy.